Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we are on episode number 227. As always, I am Shane Thomas. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at smthomas3. Today we're going to be talking about site performance and how you can use a little module in Drupal called QuickLink to easily get performance gains on your website. So what QuickLink does is it actually, when once you load a page, it actually, as you're scrolling down the page, as links come into your view or your window, it's going to preload those links. So that's really powerful because it essentially is going to allow that HTML to already be there when your user clicks on that next link. And there's a lot of really cool features. It only does it if you have a good internet connection. There's a lot of settings you can change about when you want it to run and when you don't. So we're gonna take a look at that. We're on the quick link module page here. It's just drupal.org slash project slash quick link. And you can see it has some information about how it actually works. So that, that's very useful. It works on all pretty much all modern browsers. It looks for links that are in your current viewport when your browser is idle, so it's not loading anything else, then it will run. And it won't run if you're if you're on a slow connection, and then it prefetches your URLs. So there's a bunch of configuration op options. You can see a, a little uh, screenshot GIF here. We're using the 8.x-1.2 version today. So I have our Drupal site, but before we turn this module on, I want to show you and do a little comparison so we can actually see if there are some performance gains. And again, this is just a very simple Drupal site running in a local development environment. So there's really not too much to it. I've just used the Devel Generate module to create a bunch of articles. If we go to the site and we're not logged in, we're going to pull up the network tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and click on this first link. You can see it was 317 milliseconds is what it took to load this. If we go down and we click the second link, you can see it was 283. So about, you know, 300 milliseconds we'll say is about an average for easy math. Now, what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and turn on the quick link module, look at the configuration options, and then we're going to test that again to see if, if there's any kind of improvement at all. So we'll just enable the quick link module. And we'll go to the configuration page here, which is just under configuration development, performance, quick link, configuration. There's a lot of settings here, but the good thing is you really don't have to configure any of them out of the box. They have really good sensible defaults, but it does provide you the flexibility if you want to change something. So if we look here, we can set when we want the prefetch to ignore or not be prefetched. So you can say, don't do it on admin paths, not Ajax links, there's a hash in the URL, certain file extensions, so in, or anything with any kind of file extensions, or you can specify specific URL patterns that you don't want to prefetch. You can specify, for instance, a CSS class, so it's only going to prefetch links that are inside that CSS class. So if you just want it to be in the body, maybe not the menu items, you could do that. You could specify what domains to prefetch. So you could actually prefetch links that are off of your main domain. Make sure you do include your uh, original domain in there, or you can use true and it'll allow it from every origin or every domain. You can specify when to load it. So by default, it's only for anonymous users and that's the recommended way to do it. So with authenticated, there's a lot more going on. So it's maybe not as ideal to be prefetching those links and don't prefetch during sessions. So that would be you know, something like you're using a shopping cart, something where the session needs to be uh, able to store information or specify specific uh, content types that you don't want it to display on. We want to leave this one checked by default. It just basically allows some backward compatibility with other browsers. 
and you can turn on a debug mode if you need to see what's happening. We don't need to do any of that. It's pretty good right out of the box, so we're just gonna go ahead and test it out. Before we do though, I'm gonna make sure that I go in and I wanna clear the cache just to make sure that when we test that performance, it's not using any kind of cached results. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we copy the link. We will start again. And I will pull up the network tab. And one of the things you'll notice is you, you see the network tabs empty. When I scroll down and this next link gets into the viewport, you'll see it loads. So you see how it went ahead and loaded this. Now if I click on it, you see it was originally last time it was 300 milliseconds. The load this time was 104 milliseconds. So it cut the load time in a third. And we'll go ahead and we'll go back and we'll go to the second one. And you'll see it loads again, and it's gonna kick another one, as it did, 101 millisecond. So again, it cuts the time in essentially a third just in this one specific test. You know, your results may vary a bit, but it's going to improve the performance uh, for sure. And it's, it's really kind of a cool thing because as you scroll down, you can just see your network tab down there going nuts. Uh, but it's basically going out and prefetching that HTML. So when you click that link, it's already there. It's a very fast, responsive uh, load time. It almost doesn't even feel like you're on a website. It just feels like you're really exploring an app. And, and that's really kind of what you want to go towards is you want a user of your website, whether they're on a mobile device or whether they're on a browser, to when they click that link, they don't even have to realize that there's a load time. It just, it's there. And so that's why the quick link module is really powerful. That's all there is this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. Make sure you go to CodeKarate.com, subscribe to that newsletter. Make sure you just subscribe to the videos on YouTube so you know every time we release one of these new videos. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.